You have probably seen a couple of people online sharing their tax salaries, which often go to the ranges of $500,000 per year. However, most of those people have not started with salaries like that and instead worked their way up. And if you're wondering what those people did to get to those levels, this video is right for you. Often, people think that those salaries come with a spot on negotiation or recurring job switches. And while this is true to a certain extent, it's also really important to understand the skill set a person needs to get considered for high paying roles like that. You can be the best engineer on the market, but if you're stuck in a wrong opportunity or you're not working on certain soft skills that will advance your engineering career, you will remain at a mid-tier salary forever. Especially the last tip is something that most engineers are actually not aware of. So I would highly recommend to you to invest the next couple of minutes in your career and learn a thing or two. First, you want to pick the right opportunity or team. One key factor to consider is what the company that you're working for is investing in right now. Are they focusing on a particular technology? or a framework? Are they expanding into new markets or launching new initiatives? Another factor to consider is growth potential. Is the team or the area that you're considering known for strong track records of career advancements and growth? Or is there even room for you to take on new responsibilities and challenges as you develop your skills and knowledge? If you're picking a team with growth potential, you'll be setting yourself up for long-term success and advance within a company faster. On the other hand, however, you probably also want to think about a team that has a clear gap in in tech leadership. If you're an experienced software engineer with leadership skills, joining a team that is in need of tech leadership could be a great opportunity for you to make an impact and advance your career. Next, you want to get into a mindset of being okay with switching tech stack. As a software engineer, it's really important to have a diverse set of skills and be open in learning new technologies. And yes, it's scary to venture out of your comfort zone and learn something new, but it can also be incredibly rewarding and lead to new career opportunities for you. In my own career, I have switched tech stacks multiple times and each time it was a real growth experience given I had to relearn how things work and find new ways to become productive in a different environment. But ultimately, it helped me tremendously to where I'm at right now. And one key factor to consider when deciding whether to switch tech stacks is what your team needs the most. Are there certain technologies or skills that are high in demand on your team, on your company? For example, in the past couple of years, I've seen a tremendous shift into Android and machine learning because that's where people are needed. We have way too many iOS engineers and we need more Android engineers. It's also important to never stop learning new skills, even if it's scary. The tech industry is constantly evolving and it's essential to stay up to date with the latest technology and best practices. Next up, you want to find people that inspire you and learn from them. In your organization or in your industry, find people who are already where you want to be. Analyze how they work. For example, how do they behave in critical meetings? What have they done to get there? And how can you learn from them? By seeking out those role models and learning from their experiences, you'll be able to gain valuable insights and guidance on your own career journey. Next, what you want to focus on is don't be afraid to take on new challenges and be proactive. Let's say you've been working in the same field for five years. Look back at the opportunities that you had and the growth that you've seen in yourself in the past five years. Most likely, you're very much in your comfort zone right now, which doesn't really help you to grow to new levels. To overcome this, you need to step outside of your comfort zone. Just to give you an idea of how you can do this, here are some ways for you to be proactive. You can volunteer for special projects or initiatives that align with your goals or interests. This can help you gain new skills, new experiences, demonstrate your commitment to the team or the organization, and also find other people to learn from. Another thing you can do is think outside the box for your company and team. For example, you can go to tech conferences, you can go to training sessions, you can pursue additional education that can have a positive impact for your team or the organization. Another way to do this is to go out in the industry and help others. You can be a mentor for junior engineers, you can share your knowledge, you can write blog posts, you can contribute to open source or suggest new ideas to problems that don't have solutions yet. Lots of people decide to stay in their comfort zone way too much. And I think when you've been comfortable for a long time, you need Need to be scared again and take on new things. Next up, I want you to focus on seeking out enjoyment of your role instead of hyper-focusing on growth. In my time as an engineering manager and also having mentored many, many junior engineers, I'm seeing lots of them focusing on promotions and how to get a raise way too early in their career. They're only looking at the expectations that are set for them and try to just hit those expectations without actually 
trying to have fun in that role. In my opinion and in my own personal experience, I was doing much better in my job when I was having fun because work just becomes easier. You enjoy showing up and you have more ideas and you're less stressed and more relaxed in your role. Sometimes you should focus on the projects that you actually want to do instead of what's good for you on paper. If you're forcing yourself as a leader, for example, you're missing out on a critical opportunity to actually become a leader. You'll be more motivated, you'll be more engaged, more productive, and this will also show the quality of your work. I've also seen tons of people burn out from um, only focusing on promotions or growth. Often they lose motivation when they reach those levels and they forgot how to have fun at their work. The last and most important thing that you can learn from this video is probably this one. It's to find a sponsor. And most of you probably don't know what I'm talking about when I'm saying a sponsor. It's not a mentor, it's not a coach. A sponsor is someone that talks about and acts for you and as a result can help you get better opportunities. Typically, sponsors are in a higher level than you. They are most likely in a leadership position, either in your company or in another company. And they're operating outside of the circle that you're in, but they see your potential of growth. Sponsors often indirectly help you shape your career path, even if you're not fully aware of their involvement. They most likely got to know you through your reputation or your direct work output, which means you can't just walk up to the VP in your company and ask them to be your sponsor. That's not how it happens. Instead, it happens naturally. For example, through conversations with your direct leadership or from observing the work you did in a given time period. Senior leaders in our industry are always looking for new talent and focusing on your work reputation will actually help you get there. In summary, high salaries don't just happen overnight. They need a certain amount of skill and concrete actions in order to become relevant for the organization or the company that you're working in. But once you've done all the steps that I've outlined in this video, there's a high chance that you will be one of those high performers one day. So good luck in your journey and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.